Martin Museum of Country Bygones can be found in the village of Martin in Warwickshire. It contains a record of country life, appropriately located right in the heart of the English countryside. The items that you'll find in the museum reflect a way of life that has been lost with the gradual mechanisation of the countryside over the 19th and 20th centuries. This applies just as much to domestic life as well as to agriculture and village trades. There is little here in the museum that was powered by fuel or electricity. Apart from a few early vacuum cleaners and the odd kettle, everything was hand-driven or used by a bit of original horsepower. We occasionally lend out some of our exhibits, um, and this is some from a recent exhibition at the Kenilworth Show. Now, inside the museum, uh, there are a number of different sections dedicated to different aspects of village life. In particular, the village farms take up quite a bit of the exhibits. And here you can see some of the harnesses and other paraphernalia that was associated with the use of horses on the farms. And to take as an example of another village trade, the wheelwright was also very important. And we have got a very good selection of tools for use by the wheelwright, who obviously supported the local farmers. And we did have a wheelwright shop actually in the village, near to where the pub is today. Now you can also see uh, a number of items that are associated with the harvesting and sowing of various crops. Here is a seed fiddle that was used for broadcasting the seed before it was done by proper machinery. And here you can see uh, a hand uh, hoe that had been recently renovated by a local farmer. Um, the the colours you see here are quite authentic. Um, as colours were quite important actually in the countryside. People don't associate that with a lot of uh, machinery used by farmers. Here is uh, more of the harvesting um, implements used here for various forms of grain crops. But also we have got some more substantial um, knives here that we use for different forms of root crops. And the different ni knives are associated with the different types of uh, roots that were being harvested. Now here you can see some branding irons that were used with local cattle and the different letters obviously help to identify the owners just in case they went a wandering or in fact got stolen. Now there are quite a few exhibits associated with sheep farming and this is a very early hand shearer. Now it wouldn't be just one person operating it, one would be turning the handle while the other would actually be shearing the sheep. We've also got a substantial section associated with the dairy, very important part of uh, any farm in those days for producing their own milk and uh, butter and cheese of course. And there's a number of items that we've got, including some decorative butter pats that uh, can be seen in the display cases. Um, we're also very lucky to have this early butter churn, which would uh, form an important part of the process. For the local farmer, pests were a nuisance, and we've got a number of traps for uh, used with birds and mice and so on. But this is one for the two-legged variety. That's uh, for local poachers. It was made probably in the late uh, 18th, early 19th century by the local blacksmith. And it still, as you can see, operates very well. The museum, though, has, as well as a lot of um, farming implements of one kind or another and village trades, got uh, items associated with the uh, domestic scene and 
as you can see, uh, uh, keeping a house clean required a lot of physical effort. And for the person that was doing all this work, it would be as good as going down to the gym. There wasn't many things that made the task of keeping the home clean. Um, if you look at some of the simple hand irons and uh, uh, sweeping implements, cooking implements, um, it would take a lot of work and a lot of effort. There is some rather more delicate um, aspects of home life, so, such as lace making and sewing, um, uh, in the display cases. Here we can see some of the scales, obviously. And this is just uh, one of our very early electric kettles, in very good condition, in fact. Now, the museum was the inspiration of this man, George Timms. Uh, since moving to the village in the 1950s, George managed to beg, borrow, uh, and, and buy from the local community nearly all the items on show, together with many more that we've got in storage. Though much is also due to the generosity of local individuals, especially, especially local farmers, it was the sheer hard work of George over a period of almost 50 years that allowed the collection to exist in the form it has today. All his spare time is devoted to the project, both before and after his retirement. And the museum's had a number of locations in the village since spilling out of George's home, but only in the early 1980s uh, was a permanent home found on Martin's playing fields, his pleasant location. In George's later years, poor health meant the museum was only open infrequently, and then not at all after his death in 2005. However, by 2010, the Timms family, that had responsibility for the Museum Trust, passed over the care of the museum to a group of villagers, who spent the last few years cataloguing the collection and preparing a bid for heritage lottery funding to help preserve the collection and present it in the best possible way. And last summer, the museum was opened on a regular basis for the first time in years. Do come and see it in its raw state. You're guaranteed that there's something for everyone. Even volunteers who have been working with the objects for the last few years spot different things that they had missed on previous visits. Even better, try and help us with some of the mystery items for which we've still not identified their, uh, their function. It is a true cabinet of curiosities, a real Aladdin's cave of old countryside treasures. We hope to see you soon.